afternoon, good evening, good morning, brothers and sisters. Um, just a blessing to be with you again, uh, looking and uh, sharing some thoughts that I have from Randy Alcorn's book called Heaven. It's been an amazing, amazing read, and uh, it's blessing me, so I want to bless you. Um, as I said, I want to kind of act uh, as a tour guide. Uh, and thanks again to my good friend, uh, uh, Hugh uh, Cleo, who um, introduced me to the book. And uh, it's just blessing my soul. I trust that you're being blessed real good as well. Chapter four, uh, there's, a, there's a question here. Can you know you're going to heaven? Can you know you're going to heaven? You know, if, if there's anything that I want to know that I know that I know, it would be this. If, if I could know, I would want to know this beyond, beyond, any, beyond knowing anything else. Knowing this, if I could just know. Can you know you're going to heaven? Ancient cities kept rolls of their citizens. Guards were posted at the city gates to keep out criminals and enemies by checking their names against the list. This is the context for Revelation chapter 21, verse 27, which reads, Nothing impure will ever enter the city, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Ruthanna Metzgar, professional singer, tells a story that illustrates the importance of having our names written in the book. He writes, several years ago, she was asked to sing at the wedding of a very wealthy man. According to the invitation, the reception would be held on the top two floors of Seattle's Columbia Tower, the Northwest's tallest skyscraper. She and her husband, Roy, were excited about attending. At the reception, waiters in tuxedos offered luscious hors d'oeuvres and exotic beverages. The bride and groom approached a beautiful glass and brass staircase that led to the top floor. Someone ceremoniously cut a satin ribbon draped across the bottom of the stairs. They announced the wedding feast was about to begin. Bride and groom ascended the stairs, followed by their guests. At the top of the stairs, a maitre d' with a bound book greeted the guests outside the doors. May I have your name, please? I am Ruthanna Metzgar, and this is my husband, Roy. He searched the M's. I'm not finding it, ma'am. I'm not finding it, ma'am. Would you spell it, please? Ruthanna spelled her name slowly. After searching the book, the maitre d' looked up and said, I'm sorry, but your name isn't in here. There must be some mistake, Ruthanna replied. I'm the singer. I sang for this wedding. The gentleman answered, it doesn't matter who you are, or what you did. Without your name in the book, you cannot attend the banquet. He motioned to a waiter and said, show these people to the service elevator, please. The Metzgars followed the waiter past beautifully decorated tables, laden with shrimp, whole smoked salmon, 
and magnificent carved ice sculptures. Adjacent to the banquet area, an orchestra was preparing to perform, the musicians all dressed in dazzling white tuxedos. The waiter led Rufana and Roy to the service elevator, ushered them in, and pushed G for the parking garage. After locating their car and driving several miles in silence, Roy reached over and put his hand on Rufana's arm. Sweetheart, what just happened? When the invitation arrived, I was busy, Rufana replied. I never bothered to RSVP. Besides, I was the singer. Surely I could go to the reception without returning the RSVP. Rufana started to weep, not only because she had missed the most lavish banquet she'd ever been invited to, but also because she suddenly had a small taste of what it will be like someday for people as they stand before Christ and find their names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Throughout the ages, countless people have been too busy to respond to Christ's invitation to his wedding banquet. Many assume that the good they've done, perhaps attending church, being baptized, singing in the choir, or helping in a soup kitchen, will be enough to gain entry to heaven. But people who do not respond to Christ's invitation to forgive their sins are people whose names aren't written in the Lamb's Book of Life. To be denied entrance to Heaven's Banquet will not just mean going down the service elevator to the garage. It will mean being cast outside into hell forever. In that day, no explanation or excuse will count. All that will matter is whether our names are written in the book. If they're not, we'll be turned away. Have you said yes to Christ's invitation to join him at the wedding feast and spend eternity with him in his house? If so, you have reason to rejoice, my friend. Heaven's gates will be open to you. If you have been putting off your response, your RSVP, or if you presume that you can enter heaven without responding, without responding to Christ's invitation, one day you will deeply regret it. End of that section. Heaven is the best news we ever heard. Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, or many places to dwell. If it were not so, he says, I would have told you. I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And if I go away, I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there may you be also. And he's coming, and he's coming real soon. The good news, when Jesus got up out of the grave, God raised him from the dead and made him both Lord and Christ. He gathered some disciples around him during the 40 days that he was speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom. And he said to them, I'm going to give you a message that's backed up by all of heaven's authority. There'll be no power on earth 
own heaven or any earth that can override the blessing of this message and the power to heal and deliver and to save. He says, all power has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them then to observe all things, all the things that I've commanded you, all the things that I've taught you. And as you do this, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with this message, even to the end of the age. Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 18 to 20. Your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Do you know it? For sure. It's time to know. I know in whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him against that day. Maranatha.